Hey guys, it's Foolish Mortal 42 back with some more Battle Tech. Uh, I'm playing Hunters Marauders. Ooh, I never noticed that. Uh, so I got those five episodes down, and I got up this morning. It's like four o'clock in the morning, and I just couldn't wait to get back in here and play some more. So I'm sorry if my voice is a little gunky. So, uh, so we've talked to Yang, and we've. Uh, uh, got our uh, battle mechs uh, in the repair uh, area. <clears throat> so, so, all right. So let's go up to navigation, uh, and I guess this is kind of where we decide where we can go, and that's our contract. But we'll, we'll work on that later. So. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk to Samaya. Yes, Commander? Hey, Commander, something I can do for you? <clears throat> also, and I've noticed that uh, on the end of those conversations, I was skipping, like, an entire paragraph on both of them, so I'll try and remember not to do that. Uh, does the decision we made about uncertified contract satisfy your concerns? My concerns won't be satisfied until our creditors have been paid and the loan sharks are off our backs. But this is a step in the right direction, and that makes me happy. I'm not blind to the risk that uncertified contracts entail, by the way. I mean, I know that what we're doing is dangerous, but it's the best chance we have to dig ourselves out of this hole. Alright. Ask away. I mean, it's kind of important that you understand what you're doing, so if I can help with that, I'm all for it. Ship navigation. <clears throat> the short answer is that you pick a destination on the star map and I make it happen. Interstellar travel takes time, sometimes weeks, and it'll cost us sea bills for fuel and passage on a jump ship. But it's the only way for an outfit like ours to survive out here. We go where the work is. Uh, what intel can you tell me about a system before choosing to go there? Enough to make a reasonable, informed choice, I think. The star map makes political boundaries clear, so you'll know whose space we're entering. I've programmed the star map to lock out travel to systems de designated as no-fly zones. We're looking for work and not an in interstellar incident. <clears throat> Beyond political boundaries, the nav system will highlight political factions active in the system. That should give you a good idea of who's hiring. It's probably a good idea to check our reputation with the local factions before ordering a long voyage. Uh, there's got to be more intel than just local politics. There is. As you select systems on the star map, you'll see a list of attributes the MerkNet database associates with them. Attributes like black market or poor are clues to local store contents. The type of Mercs you'll find in hiring halls, contracts we may be offered, and potential mission environments. If you hover over an attribute, the star map will display a longer description for you. Beyond the political factions and attributes of a system, perhaps the most important to watch for is the difficulty rating of the Merc contracts we'll find there. The MRB maintains a standardized rating system, so folks like us who are trolling the Merc net for jobs can weigh the risks before accepting a contract. Well, that's handy. <clears throat> oh gosh, this might take a while. Well, the long answer is there are two types of space travel. Travel by drop ship, like ours, and travel by jump ships. Drop ships travel under 1G of thrust to move from a planet's orbit to a jump point. Joint po joint <clears throat> jump points are far outside the gravity well of the star, so travel to and from a jump point takes most of our travel time, sometimes weeks. <clears throat> jump ships, on the other hand, are like ferries. They just sit at a jump point waiting for folks like us to latch onto their docking collar, and we wait there for about five days while they spin up their jump drive. Once the jump drive is spun up, popping a dozen light years across interstellar space to another point takes nearly no time at all. I've heard stories about pirate points that a jump ship can use. What are those? <clears throat> They're bad news, commanders. Difficult to locate and dangerous to use. 
I've heard of people using pirate points to in desperate situations or on covert missions, but it's not worth the risk of a misjump. <clears throat> you won't <clears throat> excuse me, you won't find any pirate points on my star map, I can tell you that. Let's just avoid them. Uh, but they do come in handy, so we always have to pay our way from system to system. Not always, though. If you check the contracts list in the command center, you'll often find employers posting travel contracts. Travel contracts are how employers attract mercenaries to their system by paying down its travel expenses. Well, that is very handy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why not take the travel contract and then skip out on their mission for more lucrative contract when we arrive? You can do that, Hunter, but we'll automatically get charged the cost of the jump. <clears throat> you know that old saying, there's no such thing as a free ride? Yeah, unfortunately, it's still true. My cat is acting, well, like a cat, I guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the star map confuses me sometimes. Why does it take longer to get to one place than another when the systems appear to be in the same distance apart? Yeah, that bothered me too before I joined the Academy. Turns out that in real life, space travel isn't like what you see in the adventure holovids that Darius makes us watch. <clears throat> For starters, some stars are more massive than others. In the case of a really big star, you have a range pretty far afield to find a location suitable for a KF job. And for us, that means a whole lot of molasses slow sub-light travel before we even dock with the jump ship, let alone ride it anywhere. Jump ship charging sh times are the other half of the travel time equation. A jump ship's KF drive will take a few days to recharge after each jump. So if your destination is a few jumps away, well, you get where I'm going with this. And that's the long and short of it. Anytime you want to go from one system to another, we're talking about weeks of sublight travel coupled with a healthy dose of hurry up and wait. Exactly how much determines how long the trip is going to take. Uh, what can I do while we're orbiting in system? Beyond negotiating a contract, most inhabited systems maintain a hiring hall where we can recruit new Mac warriors. Be sure to take a look. You never know what kind of talent you're going to find. Most systems also have merchants we can buy and sell hardware, such as weapons, equipment, and mech parts. Sometimes even fully operational battle mechs, too. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> Collecting stories about the crew, tell me something about yourself. Well, I'm from a noble family like you. We're old money. Made our fortune out in Rosselhog, then repatriated to the Torian Concordia. That's where I grew up. I'm not sure if this is the kind of stuff you were hoping to hear, but we can talk about whatever. <laughs> I'm not shy. Uh, where in the Concordian are you from? I grew up in New Vandenberg. It's a nice enough place, I suppose. Do you like birds? Uh, sure. <clears throat> then you'd like New Vandenberg. It's basically one big aviary. Something like two-thirds of the native fauna has feathers, flutters on the wind, and splatters its excrement across every available surface. Naturally, the original colonists adopted the feathery little monsters into the culture, and those of us that came after were kind of stuck with it. Statues, fountains, murals, you name it. Just a giant feathery pile of screeching alien birds. The system had a motto would be squawk. <clears throat> Oh, that's cute. Maybe if I hadn't grown up with it. Uh, where'd you learn to pilot a leopard, anyway? The Turian Naval Institute on New Vandenberg. Well, among other places. It's a big campus. The low-gravity training station orbiting Lompoc was my second home for a time. The TNI flight, Acad flight training isn't usually open to civilians, but my parents had good credit back then, and they could name drop Protector Calderon. Hmm. <clears throat> that'll get you pretty far in the Concordance, for a while anyway. The other cadets in my class weren't especially happy sharing air with the civvy. They couldn't say much. I was nobility, and they weren't. Everyone sort of kept me at arm's length, so I had plenty of time to concentrate on the studies. 
Got my certification certification in both dropship and jump ship operation in four years. I even tried working on a commercial jump crew for a while, once upon a time. People were fun, but it wasn't for me. The ratio of flying to violent jump sickness skewed hard in the wrong direction. <coughs> House Meyer. You're looking at it. My parents are both gone, blood cancer and heart disease, respectively. Uh, both treatable, but they were out of money at that point, so into the ground they went. Uh, ditto my brother David, who ran off to serve in the Third Succession War and never came back. I'm no stranger to loss myself. Yeah, I'm sure you're not. Nobody is really. It's, it's a rough galaxy. David was 13 years older than me and had a foot out the door before I turned three. And my parents, well, they raised me by proxy. <clears throat> In the traditional noble fashion, there was no real bond there, even when I was young. None of this is to say that my folks were bad people. They weren't. They were just doing what they knew. Their upbringing had been outsourced, just like mine was. I guess that's something that you never really think about with, uh, you know, with the monarchy and stuff. You know, not that we have a lot of monarchy in modern times, but I'm sure we do. Uh, your family came from Rosselhawk? Cat, you're making me nervous. <laughs> there was a long time ago, but yeah, as my parents told it, we were land, land owners at Palme de Terre. It's an agricultural world, sort of like a breadbasket of the Draconis Combine. And yes, I know the palm de terre means potato. My ancestors came from the planet potato. It took some time for me to accept that, but hey, here we are. Anyway, moving on. House Meyer's holdings were meager, but the value of that land was astronomical. For minor nobility, we were really very wealthy. And then the Third Secession War broke out and the political rhetoric got ugly. House Meyer didn't want a single part of what was happening, so my ancestors emptied their accounts and ran. <clears throat> As a rule, House Carita takes a really dim view of nobles that cut and run. Words like traitor and defector start getting thrown around. In the Combine, you really don't want to be on the receiving end of allegations like that. Wouldn't be standing here today if House Calderon hadn't granted my ancestors asylum in the Concordant. In all likelihood, House Meyer would have been wiped out before I was even born. Uh... All right. I'll be here if you need me. Uh, so finances. Let's see what we actually have here. Wow, this is really complicated. So our monthly total of expenses is one hundred thirty thousand. We've only got eight hundred ninety-six, so that will go very quickly. So this is our upkeep for our uh, max. Also, we've got a Locust extra. We've got four uh, Mech Warriors, including myself. So, our morale is pretty good. Okay, so you can actually increase morale on your dropship. And, uh, current level of expenditure. Huh. Alright, and now our reputation. So we're pretty much indifferent with everybody, so. So we're going to be, I think we're going to be heading into the Magistry of Cannabis first, so. Customized capital, let's see what this is about. <clears throat> Ooh, we can change our name. Uh, our crest, we've got a sword and shield now. Wow, there's a lot of crests. Ooh. Another type of sword and shield. Hmm. 
Ooh, I kind of like that. I like a little chevron kind of thing. Almost like a Federation from uh, Star Trek. Ooh, I like that. Uh, <clears throat> but that's the one that we're... Yeah, let's do that. That's almost like a Jedi thing. Why not? Uh, our primary colors. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, how about... Green and gold. Green and gold with red highlights, maybe? Or orange. Ah, I like that. I like that. <clears throat> All right, and we'll keep Hunter's Marauders. I, I think I'll be okay with that. All right, so let's go find us a contract. So we've only got one contract, Smugglers. We've seen a rise in the quantity of unregistered small arms in Bellerophon. A heavily armed population makes Can Canopian operations more difficult. <clears throat> we've tracked the weapons back to a hidden smuggling base operated by pirate forces. That base needs to be destroyed. Uh, Darius. I'm not expecting a lot of defenders, Commander. There are likely to be turrets. There's a bonus. We'll wipe out the base garrison as well, but that's your call. Uh, so we're going to get a little bit of salvage, uh, a little bit of pay, and some reputation. I um, guess that's going to be with uh, Canopian, or uh, Cannabis. Difficulty rating is a half of a skull, I guess. Travel, 12 days. Um, so that should get... All right. Amelia Cortez, Magistrate of Cannabis. Commander, I hope you are in good health. This contract may interest you. It fits your skills and strength of your company. With any luck, we'll both get what we want out of this job. So we can negotiate... So if we get if we want more money, oh, it's just a slider. Okay. So do we want Hmm. I think we'll just kind of keep it <clears throat> Yeah, I can't change that around too much. I really want some salvage, but... Hmm. So if we move everything down, we'll get uh, a max bonus. Okay, so this is just our bonus pay. Alright. So we'll just kind of go there. Calculating course now, Commander. All right, our first job. Woo <clears throat> okay, so it gives us a little account. Now. Excuse me. Ooh. So that's the docking collar, so. So that thing is humongous. Shakedown. You're on the Leopard's Bridge when Samar, Yang, and Darius <clears throat> with them for the daily staff briefing. Darius says, we received three messages from the banks. Loan sharks, Samar. Uh, 
uh, cuts in. From the people we, who are financing us, Darius continues, they're considering rewriting the terms of our loans, so it'll be easier to seize the ship if we miss a payment. As usual, they're only doing this because they believe we can't fight it in court. Sweet talk to the banks, ignore the messages, educate the banks about their mistake. Um... Yeah, let's sweet talk. I'll talk to them, you say, and the meeting moves on. Afterward, you record a response. In it, you explain with much gravitas that you selected each of the banks for their prestige and re reliability. You remind them of your impeccable payment history. You conclude by expressing your desire for a long and fruitful financial relationship with them, hinting that you might seek additional loans when your current ones are paid in full. A few days later, the banks contact you to say their previous messages were sent in error and should be ignored. Your company has gained the following tags. Loan status, fair. The company's credit is currently rated as fair by the banks. Should at least deter them from sending bounty hunters after you. Okay. Well, um... Always good to see you in Ops Commander. Okay, um... So, Glitch is out of action for another 18 days. Uh, the Blackjack has 32 days. Oh my gosh. So, we're, even when we get there, we're going to have to wait until... Um, oh, crap. I didn't realize that Blackjack was going to take so long to work on. We've arrived at Bellerophon, <coughs> Commander, ready to proceed to our current contract. Not yet. So, um, let's see. Wow, this is getting really... All right, let's see what we got. <clears throat> so we've only got three mechs. Um, the Vindicator is four days out, so we can wait four days and we'll actually have a full lance. Um, and we need that Vindicator and that Shadowhog. I'm... That blackjack's just gonna have to wait. I can't wait a month. Uh, glitch, I'm sorry. <clears throat> but you're gonna have to be benched for this one. Um, so we've got Behemoth, Decker, myself, and Medusa. Standing by. <clears throat> who's a fair pilot, so. Alright, so let's just kinda go with that. See what we can get here. Let's see, a panther would be really handy. Um, another spider. Let's see. Um, so we could get an AC5. Um, flexible weapon, AC5, strike a balance between long range. AC5s are really handy. <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm all congested -y. Machine guns, machine gun ammo Let's see, SRMs Um Let's see Let's get well, I don't have anything to put it on, so there's no need to buy it stuff, so. Um, Alright, so let's wait four days for the Vindicator to get done, and then we'll launch. Alright. So, Glitch, you're going to be down for ten more days. The Blackjack is, ooh, a while out. All right, so let's launch our contract. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Um, see the Shadowhawk, SRMs, jump jets, medium laser, and an AC-5. So I will take that one. Let's see. Okay. K 
cat. Alright, the Vindicator, medium laser, and the PPC. And the LRMs. Yeah, I can't really... Um, see. Uh, guarded. Alright, Decker's gonna be our um, spider driver for sure. Um, let's get... Well, these are about the same. Uh, our guts, we'll put her in the Vindicator and she'll be our tank. And this locust is just there for fun, I guess. Alright, Medusa, you're on the locust. So we're actually kind of light. We've got two heavies, or two, they're mediums technically, but they're heavy for us. At least my cat's keeping me company. Yeah, Wolf's Dragoons. Yeah. Badasses. Wonder where they got their tech from. Just saying. All right. Uh, so here's our mission brief, which is basically the same thing. So this should be a very easy um, run. So destroy structures and smuggling base and escape. So this is probably going to be very much like a skirmishy type mission. So I'm 26 minutes in, uh, and I actually I'm going to go on and uh, split the video there. Uh, some of those went like 40 minutes, so I don't want to go too far over. So I tell you guys what I will see you guys in mission, um, and I hope you guys are liking this uh, playthrough. I'm really enjoying recording it and playing it with you guys. And I'll see you guys in the mission. Thanks for watching.